So in the previous video, we showed you how to get video to show through text. In other words, the text becomes a mat um, and it creates a shape for the, the film. So it turned out that's incredibly simple in Adobe Premiere. We're basically using a thing called a track mat key. And as long as you've got your layers in the right order, it really is a 30 second operation. So a while back, I got approached to create a film with a textile artist. Um, and we wanted the titles at the beginning to sort of appear out of nowhere. So a simple way turned out to be, um, did a bit of surfing and found a clip, um, that was free called the smoke pass. Um, if I run that, you can pretty much see what's happening. It's nicely shot, um, and easy to use. So just to show you how it works as a final example in this right hand screen, if I play this. You get this very nice effect of uh, the text literally being blown out of the air and forming. Then, funny enough, I started to look at this in After Effects, but it turned out to be actually very simple to do in Premiere, and it allowed me to keep it on the timeline without jumping to an After Effects composition or having to open After Effects. Uh, so it was nice to be able to keep everything in one place. So to show you how we did that, if I get rid of this now. So same old thing applies. We want to put the text. So let's click our text tool, click on the window and type in the beginning. Now I found that um, script just looked nice. It looked organic. Uh, it would be a bit strange for rigid text sort of typing to appear in the ether, I guess. So this looked better. So remember, holding down your uh, control key, drag it, and you then get your center marker lines, which is great. So that's your text. So we're going to move it up a layer, and we're going to get this free clip. And I'm working in a 1080p uh, window here, which is 1920 by 1080. And as you can see, this clip is 720p, but it's no big deal. It's a good quality clip. So you can basically right click on it and go to set to frame size. Now there is a reason why I use set to frame size um, is because it scales it correctly. Um, if you scale to frame size, um, it fixes it to a particular resolution. And if you zoom, it can get quite sort of jaggedy. Now it's not so important with this clip, but supposing you were doing 1080 and you had a 4K clip of smoke and you put this underneath and you right clicked on it and said scale to frame size so that it was then the same size as your 1080p. That's fine. And it would work as long as you're not changing the size or zooming in at all. If you zoom zoomed in, it has actually rescaled it to 1080. So when you zoom in, you don't get the benefit of the 4K. It just becomes all grainy and falls apart. So by default, I tend to use this set to frame size in preference. So a little segue there, but you get the point. So here we are. This is your smoke pass. And as you can see, it's pretty much in the right area. I might just move it down a fraction just so that there's more white behind the letters. And there you go, and it fades out beautifully. So that's good. So, as before, type in track mat, and you will dump that onto your smoke layer or your video layer, whatever it is, the video. Then you want to select the layer that the text is on, which is two, and straight away we have this, which is quite nice. Okay. So we've got the smoke traveling across, but it doesn't look very smoky. This is the problem. This is what I hit early on. So let's do the simple things we can do first. So let's obviously fade it in. So we're going to fade in the smoke, start top and tail. And again, if you wanted that to be a bit better, a bit longer. So that now fades in, still doesn't look like smoke. So we now want to work on the text layer, and this is where the blur comes in. Um, and the Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, whatever you like to call it, is a nice accelerated effect, so it's quick to use. I'm going to drop it on the text, and I'm going to increase it. So it looks a bit softer. 
And why this works so well is because the mask itself, the mat, is literally almost getting like frayed edges, so it's letting through um, the smoke in a very convincing way. So even if we just run it as that, it just looks like an awful lot more effective. But again, I wanted that kind of bloom at the front and the beginning, so just animate it. So we reckon, what was it? I think for this, we decided about 30 was pretty good. Or I, de I decided 30 was good. So I'm going to move my playhead along, activate the little stopwatch to add a keyframe at 30. I'm then going to go along, and I think about here it should start puffing out. So I'm going to add another keyframe at 30. And then at the end, I'm going to put massive. And the same for the beginning. Move it, playhead back to the beginning, massive. So let's just now watch it. And there you get that beautiful sort of form formation into the actual writing. And all the rest is down to you. Um, obviously, you can do some very complex stuff. You could duplicate this clip up, nest them uh, to sort of make it brighter or to have different colored swirls. So here's an idea for you. Let's suppose you were going to do something more sort of horror based using this smoke thing. So I basically type the word horror. Um, it's nice to be able to use the timeline within this nested clip to provide other things, other, other actions. So if we now look at the nested clip, what I've done here, so I've got the basic clip that we had before. I've then dyed it or tinted it bright red, and that comes in later, which means you then get another swirl of red going through it. So it's very simple. But when we play it, now it's more in context with what we're doing. You've now got the horror and then you've got the red chasing through it, which is pretty nice. So just to end with some ideas of how you could use this or advance this technique a bit is don't be scared to duplicate layers. Um, use the track map key within other effects um, and combine them all and see how far you can take this. Um, so taking the idea of a horror title, for example, um, I've got my baseline uh, text here. I've got a VR glow on it, which doesn't just change uh, brightness. It changes saturation and it so that gives it a variety of actions. That's right in the background. Then I've got smoke there. So then I've changed the blending mode on that. I've got the blur um, obviously increasing. Um, then this one is the traditional track mat key, um, but it's also got a tint on it. So you get the red and that's then your text there. Nothing really being done to that. That's just really um, just for that. And then we've got another layer of text here. And this is a mask. Um, and this is like a, a tall vertical mask. Um, and the reason for this is because we have a directional blur on it. Um, the idea is that kicks in as the smoke travels across. So we've got two sets of smoke. We've got red smoke, we've got white smoke. Then I've also got a, a nested clip here, which contains, um, let me just delete all the empty tracks out of it. It's got uh, text again, and it's got the fire set by a track map key. So let's have a look how this looks. So you've sort of got external, internal uh, fire, different colors, sorry, smoke, internal and external smoke. You've got light beams, and then it changes into actual fire at the end contained within the letters. And of course, the VR glow has now changed to um, an orange, a deep orange glow. Um, we've got that one here. So if we wanted to, we've got the glow radius here. What we could do is go to this M1 and we could increase that. And then you can see how that looks. So you can play around and just try loads and loads of different combinations. And again, see which one fits you the best. But when you think this started life as bog standard text in Adobe, and by the time you finish with it, you have something really interesting.